morning everyone and welcome to this service of the word for today the last Sunday after Trinity it's also Bible Sunday and some of our prayers and readings will reflect that many of us and I include myself don't read our Bibles as often as we should but I also know that there will be many others of you who have disciplined yourselves to read it daily and some of you have even set yourself the goal of reading it all in one year a real challenge and a source of pride if you manage it. I was having a lovely chat with one of our church family a week or so ago and they told me how they were just discovering the book of the Acts of the Apostles and how exciting it was. They were right and I was really thrilled to hear that. Let's be thankful that through God's grace and through the skills and labours of scholars we have this wonderful library of books which we call the Bible and through which we learn of God's amazing provision for us, his children, and of his will for us that through his written word we may overcome our base natures and follow the perfect example of his dear son our saviour jesus christ if you printed out the service as ever please say the words in bold type proper in other words the words which are not in italic however all the responses and the words of the hymns will also be on the screen as the service proceeds grace mercy and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you and we come to our first hymn uh, it's provided for us as it has been over so many months by the choral scholars of St Martin's in the field in London they'll be singing two hymns for us and giving us an anthem our first hymn crown him with many crowns Open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Give us the joy of your saving help, and sustain us with your life-giving spirit. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God. You are my sons and daughters, this day I have begotten you. See what love the Father has given us. 
as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the children of God. See what love the Father has given us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God. Amen. The Gospel calls us to turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. As we offer ourselves to him in penitence and faith, we renew our confidence and trust in his mercy. Come, let us return to the Lord and say, Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Sovereign Lord, creator of heaven and earth and sea, and everything in them, we are your people. We give you thanks. We praise your holy name. You shake us and fill us with your spirit. You stretch out your hand to heal, to do signs and wonders through the name of Jesus. We are your people. We give you thanks. We praise your holy name. Jesus is the author of life, handed over to be killed for us. You raised him from the dead and made us whole in him. We are your people. We give you thanks. We praise your holy name. Not many of us are wise by human standards. Not many are influential. Not many of noble birth. We are your people. We give you thanks. We praise your holy name. You choose the foolish to shame the wise. You choose the weak to shame the strong, the lowly and despised, so no one may boast before you. We are your people. We give you thanks. We praise your holy name. Your strength is made perfect in our weakness. Your grace is enough for us. We are your people. We give you thanks. We praise your holy name. And a special prayer for Bible Sunday. Lord God, your word, that lamp for our feet, reveals to us the stony ground we often tread upon, where, stumbling in our weakness, we reach out a hand for you to hold asking simply that you lead us once again to firmer ground, toward that rock upon which our journeying began, where in safety we can rest a while. Amen. And now Deirdre reads our New Testament reading for us. A reading from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 3, verses 12 to 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we come to our anthem. The tune is so familiar, 
you can sing along to it if you like. It's the tune Jerusalem by Hubert Parry. But there are new words to this tune. Uh, it's not a national song. It's a lovely song of praise. Bring to the Lord a glad new song. And I put the words on your order of service for you so that you can follow it and maybe even sing along to it if you like. Julian will read our Gospel for us. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If Deirdre sends me out to Sainsbury's, which he tries to avoid doing, I will invariably return without at least one thing she needed or the wrong thing that she won't be able to use. I daren't go without a list and even then I'm not infallible, but it helps. Now I'm sure I must have had this thought before, but I realised when preparing this sermon that Paul likes lists. Lists are the way he makes sure that he hasn't left out anything important. Do you remember from a recent reading we had this list? Whatever things are true, 
Whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. There's a shorter list later in that same passage, psalms, hymns and spiritual songs. In Romans too we find if you call yourself a Jew and rely on the law and boast of your relation to God and know his will and determine what is best because you are instructed in the law and if you are sure that you are a guide to the blind, a light to those who are in darkness, a corrector of the foolish, a teacher of children, having in the law the embodiment of knowledge and truth, you then that teach others, will you not teach yourself? And what about this one in Romans 8? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Or in Romans 12? We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. See what I mean? I don't think I can take that observation much farther, but I do find it interesting it shows us the clarity and thoroughness of Paul's thought processes. They are good lists. There are lists of bad things too, such as we find earlier in the same chapter that we're looking at this morning. They don't make pleasant reading. Fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire and greed, which is idolatry, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth, these are all facets of the behaviour of the pagan society from which the new Christians of Colossae needed to free themselves. It can't have been easy. Sadly, every one of the items on that list can be readily identified in our modern society, can't they? I sometimes feel we're enmeshed in them, desperate to get free. Self-gratification exerts a powerful pull over us all. In today's short reading though we have with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness and patience virtues with which Paul urges Christians to clothe themselves. How lovely! I want to do that. I try to do that. Though the opposite of these fine qualities surface in me more often than I would like. These are the things that Paul tries to live by. They are the qualities which Jesus spoke of in his Sermon on the Mount. And sometimes they fly in the face of our self-esteem, our dignity, as well as our temptation to indulge in dubious pleasures. We must learn to lay those aside, hard though that may be at times. Let's just think about Paul's list of five virtues for a moment. Compassion. Sometimes easy to feel, sometimes not. We see such dreadful sights on TV these days, babies with huge eyes and swollen bellies on the verge of death through starvation. Compassion comes easily then, I imagine. But I am touched and humbled by those whose compassion is not conditional, exemplified for me in a recent episode of Ambulance, where the crew went to tend to a man who had probably broken his ankle, jumping out of the first floor window of a house he'd been burgling. The paramedics treated him with the same gentleness and concern that they appear to give to all their patients. I hope I could be as gracious. Kindness. Easy enough towards those who are kind to us, but less easy when we come across hostility, such as when someone makes an unjustified complaint against us. I can struggle not to respond with the same level of heat. Difficult too when we encounter individuals who do not immediately attract us for whatever reason, matters of appearance, personal hygiene, manner of speaking. It's easy to love the lovable and be kind to them, and much harder to love those who make us uncomfortable in one way or another. Humility. Well, I do try, but sometimes I just know I'm right. Meekness. It's not a word we use much these days, is it? We find it in the Sermon on the Mount when Jesus says, Blessed are the meek. It seems to me gentleness, avoiding being forceful in speech, though not necessarily backing down. 
It was not a quality much admired by people in first century society, so Jesus' praise of people who exhibited it was countercultural, as was so much of his teaching. Paul was unlikely to have been meek before his conversion, I imagine. I wonder if he found it hard afterwards. Perhaps when he says he is a sinner, meekness was something he couldn't always manage. If so, he could join my club. Patience. Are you patient? I think we get more patient as we get older. Perhaps. Those of us who are retired or semi-retired have fewer time pressures, and it's time pressure that leads to impatience most often. Shamefully, however, I find I'm most impatient with those I love most, because their actions impact most on my life. It's a sin I frequently have to confess to God and apologise to Deirdre for. Perhaps we should score ourselves out of five or ten on each of these qualities, but I'll leave that up to you. Today is Bible Sunday, and Paul's advice to let the word of Christ dwell in us richly is so appropriate for us today, as it is, of course, for every day. It can only dwell in us if we keep on reading it, hearing it, turning it over in our mind, letting it mould us, change us, so that gradually our heads become full of good teaching. It may come directly from Bible passages we have heard, or it may be the words of a hymn, so often sources of valuable guidance. We could do no better than allow some of Paul's good lists, part of the word of Christ as mediated through Paul, to embed themselves in our memories as checklists on our daily behaviour, not as rods to beat ourselves up with when we get things wrong, because we will, but as beacons to draw us back to the path which leads to Christ. And so to our creed. I've used a different one again this time. It's a creed that we often use in our family service and sometimes in baptism services. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature died for us and rose again. We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Tricia leads us in our intercessions. Let us pray. We pray today, Lord, for your world. Grant us the grace to grow deeper in our respect and care for your amazing creation. And Lord, help us to recognise the sacredness of all your creatures as signs of your wondrous love. Help us, we pray, to turn from the selfish consumption of resources meant for all and to see the impacts of our choices on the poor and vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your love and compassion to abound as we stumble through this time of pandemic, Lord. We ask that you bless with your wisdom those who carry the responsibility of making decisions. We pray for those who are suffering from COVID or fearful of it and for all who are caring for them. We pray especially for those frontline staff who put themselves at risk to care for others. We pray for your protection, Lord, on them and for the elderly and the vulnerable. And we pray for misinformation to be curbed so that fear may not take hold in hearts and minds. As we try to do the right thing by our friends and neighbours, may we also approach each day in faith and peace, trusting in the truth of your goodness towards us 
loving God, help us to focus on the blessings we have and not on what is removed or changed. Strengthen us, we pray, when we feel discouraged or overwhelmed. Embrace us, that we know your loving presence within us and among us. And walk with us, we pray, as we bring your love and carry your light into our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those places in the world that are suffering the results of natural disaster, of political unrest, famine, awful outwar. We pray for the people who have lost loved ones and who no longer have a home to call their own. God of the present moment. God who in Jesus stills the storm and soothes the frantic heart. Bring hope and courage to all who wait or work in uncertainty. And bring hope that you will make them equal of whatever lies ahead. Bring them courage, Lord, to endure what cannot be avoided. For your will is health and wholeness. You are God and we need you. Grant us, Lord God, a vision of your world as your love would have it. A world where the weak are protected and none go hungry or poor. A world where riches of creation are shared and everyone can enjoy them and a world where different races and cultures live in harmony and mutual respect. A world where peace is built with justice, and justice is guided by your love. Give us the inspiration and courage, Lord, to build it through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for all those dear to us that are poorly. We hold the recovery of Mike Davis in our hearts and pray for the recovery, resilience, comfort of Michael Orton. Lord, hold all that suffer at their time of illness and watch over them when they cannot sleep. Speak your love to them when they are afraid. Touch and heal them when you can. You are the fountain of life, and we pray for your life-giving water to pour down upon them. We thank you, Lord, that you will never leave us, and that you bring us a peace that surpasses all understanding. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we gather all our prayers together in the words which Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, we share together the blessing of your presence. Give us in this life knowledge of your truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Our closing hymn, At the Name of Jesus.
whether we go out into the world or whether we stay in the protection of our homes, may we live our lives in the love and service of our living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget that there is Zoom coffee if Zoom is something that you can do. Otherwise, I do look forward to being with you again at some time in the next seven days. Goodbye.